Diuretics are also known as water pills. These are medications that are used to get rid of water, sodium, and other electrolytes. The kidneys are responsible for removing many things in the body, including water, as part of the urine. Therefore, the target organ for diuretics is the kidneys. Now, the kidneys contain over 1 million nephrons, which are considered the basic functional units of the kidneys. Each nephron contains a filter called a glomerulus. The glomerulus is a network of small blood vessels that filters blood that enters the kidneys. The glomerulus is enclosed in a sac called the Bowman's capsule. The renal artery brings the blood from the rest of the body to the kidney. The blood enters the glomerulus of the nephron through the afferent arterioles. The glomerulus will then filter out any excess fluids, acid, bases, minerals, and other substances into the tubules. Think of the tubule as the duct or pipe that contains all the waste and other substances that are filtered out of the blood. We will discuss more about this next. The blood that was just filtered will then leave through the efferent arterioles and then through the renal vein to the rest of the body. So here's the renal tubule. It is divided into four parts. The proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and lastly, the collecting ducts. Let's learn more about each one. First is the proximal convoluted tubule also known as PCT. The name Proximo simply refers to the fact that it's the closest to the Bowman sac, convoluted due to all the twists and turns. If we zoom in, we have the tubule and then the blood. The PCT is mainly known for being the part of the renal tubule where the majority of filtrate is reabsorbed back into the blood. This includes water, sodium, chloride, calcium, potassium, phosphate, bicarb, urea, as well as all the glucose and amino acids. An easy way to remember that the PCT is where majority of the filtrate gets reabsorbed back into the blood is by the name. So the pro in the name Proximo reminds me of professional, someone who is really good at doing your job. So the PCT is so good that it's able to remove almost all the filtrate back into the blood. This is simply a way for the body to maintain the concentration of these molecules. Next is the loop of Henle, which is divided into the descending limb and the ascending limb. These limbs have different functions and they reabsorb different molecules. The descending limb is mainly responsible for water reabsorption, while the ascending limb reabsorbs electrolytes. Water goes down the drain or pipe. This can help you remember that the water reabsorption occurs at the descending limb. The removal of water at the loop of Henle is what makes their urine more concentrated. Next, we have the distal convoluted tubule, which helps regulate the body's potassium, sodium, calcium, and pH. Hydrogen ions and potassiums are secreted into the tubules, while bicarb and sodium and calcium are reabsorbed into the blood. Lastly, the filtrate will make its final stop at the collecting duct. Over here, hydrogen ions, potassium, and bicarbonate are secreted into the filtrate. Depending on the body's volume status, water may be reabsorbed back into the blood through aquaporins or water channels. So there are five main classes of diuretics. In the next video, I'll be discussing about the mechanism of action more in depth. This will help you understand how diuretics work in the different parts of the tubules to achieve their effects. Next videos will also include side effects, indications, pharmacology, and more. So make sure to turn your notifications on for the alerts. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to follow me on these social media platforms. Take care.